Okay, so I think I will start my class. Okay, hopefully uh, those who are not yet coming, please come in fast. So if you have problem, never mind. Okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good evening. Okay, so today we will conduct our uh, lab lecture classroom regarding uh, topic of uh, roots finding using octave. So I will uh, go straight to my uh, to my PowerPoint. Okay, so all of you can see my desktop. Can you see the desktop? Okay. Okay, okay good. Okay, uh, before we start our class, I want to go through uh, the lesson plan that we have uh, gone through before because there is some small modifications only that has been uh, uh, done on this lesson plan. So we have stopped somewhere lab number four before this, eh? lab number four. And suddenly uh, on lab number five, we, uh, we have our uh, PKP because of the COVID-19. So should be in this week, we will study about numerical solution of simultaneous equations. However, if you still remember uh, in the class, I have mentioned that we have to conduct a uh, lecture on root locations. Eh? So uh, in that sense, I will uh, put this topic in this lab number five which is using MATLAB for root locations. Yeah. And the rest of the lesson plan will be the same as you have before. There's no uh, much changes. And you, as you know that, we will have our Adelphi 3 uh, break somewhere on 25th of May until 3 of June, eh? about 10 days of break. And three weeks after that will be your uh, practical test eh, that will be conducted by online. So for the timing, you just accept that you will be done by online. And if you have some modification on this, then I will tell you uh, before that, at least uh, two or three weeks before that. Eh. So for the timing, just assume that on the week 13, all of you will go through the online practical test. Okay. So we will start our uh, lecture. Okay, so our lecture is, oh, sorry. Okay, is uh, using MATLAB for roots locations. So in this topic, we will find the roots of nonlinear equations using two uh, method, which is uh, the bisection method and the newton raphson method. Okay? So before we start our class, as usual, we have to go through the learning outcomes. So the learning outcome that you have to master in these two hours and after this is to able to write a correct and runnable octave script in order to execute the bisection method and do the same thing also to execute newton raphson method. Okay. So uh, for the third one is to plot the graph of equations. So maybe you can use other uh, software, maybe such as Excel. Eh? Uh, because uh, I found that octaves have some problem to plot the graph. Eh? So for the time being, we just stick to these two learning outcomes and the third learning outcome can be done by another software such as Excel. Okay. Okay, so for the introduction part, uh, in uh, your civil engineering uh, fields, eh, you will uh, face a lot of problem, especially to solve nonlinear equations. Eh? So, what is example of nonlinear equations? So, example of nonlinear equation will be the polynomial equation. If you see, remember your mathematics, polynomials. Okay, and to ensure that this polynomial equation to be a nonlinear, the power of the highest order will be must be more than one. So example of polynomial equation will be y is equal to e x squared okay, plus b x plus c. 
So this is the power of higher order is two, okay, which is more than one. Or maybe you can have a, a cubic equations, ax cube plus bx square okay, plus cx and plus a constant d and so on. Eh? So you can go from n is equal to two, from n is equal to three, n equal to four until uh, until whatever power that you want. Another poly uh, nonlinear equations will be the trigonometric equations, okay, trigo, where you have uh, sine x, okay, maybe you have also cos, cos x, okay, tangent, maybe you have secant, remember secant, what is secant, okay, cosecant, oops, and so on. Okay, those are example of another non-linear uh, equations. And maybe also you have another type of equation called as logarithmic equations. Okay? Maybe you have come across this word when you do your mathematics, logarithmic equation, such as log, okay? log 10, okay? log 10 x. Okay, or maybe you have ln, okay? ln x and so on. So those are some example of non-linear equations where the engineers have to solve what is the value of x here. So you have to solve x here. What is the x value there? So that the equation will be zero. Okay? So for triangle also, we want to solve what is x value here so that this function to be zero. So the same thing goes also to the logarithmic equation. You have to solve what is x value here so that log 10 x here to be zero. So in order to solve these x values, you must use numerical approach. And the famous one will be the bisection method and also the Raphson method, okay? So in uh, engineering, especially in civil engineering, you have a lot of field requires a uh, solution using uh, nonlinear equation. One of the example is the open channel dimensional determination. Uh, maybe you still remember your subject in hydraulics, eh, where you have to design your open channel. Let's say your open channel is a rectangular section, where here, where you have to design your the width, eh, the width of the channel, the depth of the channel, okay, to cater certain quantities of water, maybe due to floods. Okay, so in order to solve this problem, you must use the hydraulic equation. And I think most of you know this equation. This is taken from the Manning equation. Okay, your Manning equation, this one. Okay, where uh, Q stands for the quantity of water uh, that will go through to the channel. K is a constant depending on the units. Eh? Maybe your unit will be imperial units. Or maybe you can use metric units. Okay. Uh, A is the cross-sectional area of that uh, open channel. So if the channel set, uh, is a rectangular, so the area will be B times shape, eh? isn't it? And R, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is the hydraulic radius. Eh? where the definition of hydraulic radius is the area divided by weighted parameter. So I don't want to go through the definition of this. You, you know much more better than me. S is the slope of the channel, and N is the manning coefficient depending on the lining material of, the, uh, of your channel. Okay? So if uh, usually in your problem, the value of Q will be, be given eh, if you solve the problem. Q should be given. A, usually you, you will know the either the value of B, maybe you are given the B, maybe you don't know what is value of H. Eh? This is unknown usually. Either one, eh? either H or B. R is depending on this formula. Okay? S will be given and N is given. So if you uh, simplify this equation, at the end of the day, you will get an equation that will transform in this form. Eh? Fh is equal to zero. 
So at the end of the day, you will get a simple equation in this form where you can simplify the uh, the variables uh, and the equation only containing h. Eh? H will be the unknown value. And we want to solve what is the, the height of the open channel. So in order to solve that height, we have to use either bisection method or neutral So uh, all of the rest of the students, can you still, uh, can you follow the lecture? Are you okay with the lecture uh, for the timing? Can you hear me? Okay, sir. Okay, the rest? Okay, sir. okay, okay. Okay. Eh? Okay, so this is one example where you can apply bisection method. However, in this lecture, I don't want to solve this problem. I want to solve another simple problem, which is the beam problem, because uh, most of you are still studying structural analysis, eh, either determinate or indeterminate. So this is a cantilever beam. If you may see that this is cantilever beam. Okay. Uh, is uh, loaded by a triangular UDL that is varying from zero here until 360 pound per feet. So uh, I'm using the unit of imperial here. And the length of the, uh, the beam is 12 feet. Okay. So uh, this beam is simply supported here. Uh, is supported here. And have a cantilever portion yeah so by using statics you can get what is the reaction yeah okay and by using uh, solid mechanics i can uh, derive the equation of moment and let's say if i take the x distance is measured in this direction let's say this is your x okay? measured from point a to point b and if i cut certain section here and I apply equilibrium equation here, yeah? then I can, can get the moment expression, okay? And that moment expression is detailed on the top like this. Eh? So how to get this equation? You can consult uh, solid mechanic books. Eh? I don't want to go detail on it. So this is the bending moment acting on the beam in terms of X, okay? So what is the problem? The problem will be given by this statement what is the value of x? So you are required to find what is the x value so that the bending moment on the beam will be 220. So your problem is, what is the distance x on this beam? So if you uh, calculate the bending moment, the value of that bending moment at that x position will be 220. So that is the problem, okay? So how to do that, eh? how to solve that? So we must understand that what is the variable of interest here? Yeah? The variable of interest that you want to solve is X and you are required that to find what is the bending moment uh, value of X so that you can get 220. So I will uh, put my equation in this manner and by using your algebra, you can take this 220 from the right side to the left side. So your mx minus 220, you get zero. And this equation, I will name it as fx. Okay, fx. Eh? Meaning that your fx here is equal to 120x minus 5 over 6x cubed minus 220. So this is your fx. Eh? This is your fx. And your fx is equal to 0. So this is the equation that you want to solve. Okay. 120x minus 5 over 6x cubed minus 220 is equal to x. So what is the value of x here? So in order to solve this value of x, Again, you have to use bisection method or newton raphson method. So uh, is there any question from the floor? Any questions arise before we proceed with the bisection method? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, are you clear? Yes. 
Betul eh? Yes sir. Okay. If there's no question, I'll proceed to the next slide. Okay. So in order to use bisection method, so this slide is for bisection method. Eh? Bisection method. So uh, uh, is it Puan uh, Ashikin uh, have taught you about this method, bisection? Did Puan Ashikin or Puan Norlizan taught you about this method? Yes, sir. So now, uh, what is the topic uh, they, they are teaching now? Gauss. Gauss elimination, meaning that topic number two. Lah. So you have studied yes. about Gauss Jordan, Gauss elimination, LU decomposition, isn't it? Uh, yang, yang first je. Lagi dua belum. Oh, yang lagi. Gauss elimination nak baru. Ah. Okay, never mind. Okay. So, meaning that you have already given the 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 theory about bisection lah. Okay, so what yeah. is the first step? Okay, thank you. The first step is to provide two initial guess eh, as a student in order to solve the problem. You have to provide two initial guess value where the first value is XL XL is your lower guess value. Okay, this is lower guess value. And the next value is XU, which is your upper guess value. You have to provide these two values on your own. How to provide it? So, in order to provide a good value of lower and upper, you must ensure that the sign of this will be different the sign of FXL and FXU are different. What is meant by sign of FXL and sign FXU are different? What is the, mean, the, the meaning of this statement? What is this? Can you give some idea what is meant by this? So, different sign. Maybe, maybe if you substitute the first XL to this equation, oh sorry, the first equation, the, the first value, the first value, let's say XL, okay, you substitute in this function, maybe you get the value to be negative, let's say, and you have uh, another value for XU, you substitute xu to this equation fx, maybe you get the answer to be positive. So now you can see that both have different sign value. The first one positive, uh, sorry, the first one negative, the second one is positive. So this is successful. Or if the first value is positive or the second value is negative, you also successful. Okay. So one example, how to show uh, these two values are successful or not. If let's say I assume that my x lower to be zero, okay, then I substitute f zero here to this equation, then you can get the value to be negative, isn't it? Yes. Okay. And let's say you assume that x u upper value to be one, and I will substitute the value of one year, if you compute the value also to be negative. So if you multiply them together, eh, the answer will be positive. So if the answer is positive, meaning that there is no roots between XL and XU, eh, meaning that within zero until one, there is no roots. Eh, so the selection of XL to be zero and XL to be one is not correct. So we cannot accept this. Okay. So let's say I jump directly to the last part. Yeah? So you, uh, I, I want to uh, ignore this part. Let's say your XL here to be zero. I substitute here to this equation then you get negative value as you did in the first step. However, for the second step, for the second x, uh, x value, which is xu, 
I substitute 2 to this equation. Then if you compute the value to be positive. So if I multiply that, them together, then you get negative. So when you get negative, meaning that there is a possible one root between 0 until 2. And this range of root is correct. Okay, so if you want to understand better, you can see this uh, diagram. Eh? You can see the next diagram. Okay, so this diagram uh, showing you a, a function, a function. Okay, this is the function of f x, eh? the function f x that we have calculated before, which is one hundred and twenty x minus 5 over 6 x cubed minus 2 to o so i plot on this graph okay as a blue color line and this line with the horizontal line is your x axis so in order to know what is the root of this function so you have to know the intersecting point between the blue color function and the x-axis will be somewhere here. Right? Somewhere here, because sini. So this may be approximately to be 1.8 something. So I put in xx eh? because I don't know what is the value here. So I just put xx. So approximately the, the exact roots, eh? the real roots is 1.8 something. Okay, so if you remember that our first uh, interval, your XL is zero and your XU is one. So if I look at on this range, yeah, this range, your XL here is zero. This is zero. Where your XU here, you can see that it is one. And your exact root is 1.8. So can you see that your 1.8 is does not lies within this range? Can you see that? Yes, sir. Okay, and what is the conclusion when the exact root does not lies within this range? What is the conclusion? What is the conclusion? If the this range does not containing the exact root, what is the conclusion? No, as is. There's no roots, no roots, no root between zero until one. So this interval cannot be accepted. Okay. So I jump through across to the, the third uh, interval. Eh? So I don't want to discuss about this one. So if you still remember our first XL here to be zero and our X upper here to be two. Eh? If you still remember this, this one, eh? this one, zero until two, and you may see that one point eight is lies between zero and two. So what is the conclusion here for this interval? What is the conclusion? Anyone? What is the conclusion for this interval? When XL is zero, X upper is two. So you have root. So you have roots between zero until two. So this root can be accepted and we can go through to the next step. If there is no roots, you cannot go to the further steps. Eh? You have to find the roots interval. Okay, boleh? Boleh, eh? Boleh, uh, okay, so I will um, uh, I will proceed to the next slide. Okay, so this is the roots, the range that we have accepted that have our roots. So we must divide that interval to equal parts. Let's say this is the part, the first part I will call as range number one. The second part here, I will name it as range number two. 
and the midpoint here I name it as XM. Okay, and if you still remember, this is your X lower, and this is your X upper. So your XM here will be half, isn't it? Half of your X lower plus your X upper. Okay. So from range one and range two, if you see from this diagram, which one of the range is rejected, not having the rules? Range one or range two? Range one. Range one to be rejected yeah, or range one to be accepted? Reject. Reject. Yes. Right? So, so your selection is correct. Range number one cannot be accepted because our exact root will be here. So we have to accept this range number two. Okay. So this range number one cannot be used. Cannot be used. And we must consider range two for the next iteration. Okay. So for your first iteration, this is your iteration number one. Okay. Iteration number one. For your second iteration, this is iteration number two. Okay. For second iteration, remember that this range is accepted. Therefore, your XL will be here, isn't it? And your X upper to be here, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, so apa maksudnya kat sini? Bila XL dekat sini, apa maksudnya bila XL dekat sini? Apa maksudnya? What is the value of XL here? Uh, what is the value of X? One, sir. Oh, bukan one. Kita one. nak dalam betul formula. Kita nak dalam formula. One tu betul. One tu memang betul. Tapi in terms of formula. In terms of formula. XL equal to XM. Betul. XL is equal to your XM as computed by this formula. Nampak? Kalau you tengok awal tadi, you punya XL will be XL, X upper to be X upper, isn't it? Iteration number one. But on iteration number two, your XL is equal to XM and your XU is equal to your XU lah. Why? Because range number one is rejected. You accept range number two, nampak? Okay, why I tell you this? Because in order to do programming, you must understand this mechanics so that you can appreciate what you are coding in Octave. If not, you just only memorize the code. Okay? So that's why you have to find, uh, understand this mechanics, uh, this mechanism. Okay, can I proceed to the next slide or you have any question for this slide? Any questions? No, eh? No, sir. Okay. Daripada hari selasa tadi, saya jumpa soalan jawapan memang no lah. Biasa tu. Okay. Hopefully yang lain semua ikut eh. Jangan tidur eh. Saya mengharap sangat tolong jujur pada diri sendiri kita online class. Uh, cuba fokus. Because this is only the the session that you can uh, ask question with me. If not, you have to do personal asking lah. So sometimes, maybe on that time you uh, ask me, I'm not available. So please make use or benefit this session to focus and ask, okay? Okay, I will proceed to the next slide. Okay, this is the range number two that you have accepted, where this is your X lower equal to your XM and your X upper still equal to X upper. Okay, do you agree with this? Yeah. Okay, yeah. we proceed to the next slide. Range number two now, you have to divide it again equally to range number one and another range number two with a midpoint here is equal to XM 
and your xm here is equal to the same formula x lower plus x2 over 2 where here you have x lower and here is x upper so which of the range will be rejected so range number one will be rejected okay so this is iteration number three number the third iteration so when the range number two is accepted then this will be your x lower isn't it and this will be your x upper so what is the value of x lower here x lower is um, equal to xm. xm. Okay, so x lower is equal to xm, x upper still the same as x upper. Okay, we proceed with the next slide. This is range number two that you have accepted, where your x lower here is xm, remember, and your x upper here is x upper. Okay, so we have to perform the next uh, procedure we have to still divide this interval again to range one range to midpoint and so on okay if you this is iteration number four if i'm not mistaken so how many iteration that you have to do is it we have to do iteration until one million so can you suggest me what how to stop this process if you still see the process, the process is to get the right range and then you have to divide the range into two equal division and proceed with the same procedure, the same procedure until what? So uh, what is the suggestion to ensure that this process to be stopped? Do you still remember your lecture? Uh, Puan Nuashkin tell you about how to stop this procedure? Ini dah iteration empat sampai berapa iteration kita nak buat ni? Ada ke sampai kiamat kita nak buat benda ni? Ah. Sampai macam mana dekat kosong. Proses? Sampai dekat kosong tak akan dapat kosongnya. You will get 0 0.0001 still not zero. Isn't it? If let's say the root is 1.8, right? 1.8334 3, If you do this process maybe you get 1.8 8, uh, 3, 9. If you make another iteration, 1.8334 and so on. Until what? Dia takkan jadi kosong. Proses ni akan berterusan. We still continuous until what kind of situation will you stop? Ada tak puan Ashkin aja? Macam mana nak stop ke benda ni? Atau you pun tak perasan? Tak tahu, ah, tak tahu eh. Okay, tak tahu. Tak apalah. Kita belajar lah. Okay. In order to stop this process, we have to use a criterion called as stopping criterion. Stopping criterion. So, what is the stopping criterion? There is a stopping criterion in your books or in your notes maybe. You have to ensure that epsilon A must be always less than epsilon S. Ingat tak ni? Epsilon A and epsilon S in your lecture notes. Do you know what is epsilon A? And epsilon S? Any, any answer? Hmm, macam mana? What is epsilon A? Ni, epsilon A. What is epsilon A? Do you, do you know about absolute relative error? Absolute relative error. Ha, ni buka nota ke tak buka nota ni? Buka, ah, buka nota, buka textbook. 
absolute relative error is your epsilon a and what is the formula of epsilon a there is a formula for it uh, SM over x new x old or x new new x new minus x old divide x new x new and then time times with one percent lah 100 because we always define epsilon e is in percentage okay what is epsilon s uh, what is epsilon s apa ni epsilon s epsilon e is okay fine epsilon s what is epsilon s Pre-specific relative error tolerance. Apa dia? Pre-specific relative error tolerance. Sama. Okay, uh, I will use maybe different uh, name because of the word S here. So S is the specified error. Specified error. So usually in your course, okay, in this course, this specified error will be given by the lecturers. Eh? So usually the value is within 1% to 5%. And this is will be given by the lecturers so that you can control your process and you can stop this process uh, uh, depending on this condition. Eh? So your epsilon A will be always, must be less than, epsilon s so by using this you can stop the process if not the process will gone forever boleh 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 sir okay boleh okay yang lain tak dengar ada suara-suara popular ni kat yang ni sama ni suara dia Okay, so I will proceed with the next slide. Okay, the next slide is the starting of your programming because in order to uh, to perform programming, you must understand the algorithm. Yeah? The algorithm of Bayesian method. So if you understand this algorithm, then you can do the program of Bayesian. Okay, what you have to do, first of all, you have to know, you have to ask the user, what is your lower gas value xl you have to ask the user what is your upper gas value okay and the third one you have to ask the user what is your epsilon s okay? the specified relative error as that i said is between one to five percent which is given by the lecturer okay so in the beginning you have to ask the user these three values Okay. Boleh? Boleh. 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 And after that, okay, and after that, what you should do, this will be the next step. You have to find what is the value of fx lower and you have to find the value of fx upper. And usually, I will assign the answer to one variable, let's say f1, and this is to, to be to F2. Okay. And if I found this uh, solution, then I will multiply them together. So F1 times F2. Okay. So if F1 times F2 is greater than zero, so what is the conclusion? What is the conclusion if F1 times F2? Maksudnya apa tu? Is there any sign changes or... There is sign changes. Uh, stop program. Apa dia? No sign. No sign changes. No sign changes, meaning that the user has entered wrong value of XL or wrong value of XU. Oh. And I will, I will uh, to make that the user awake, uh, uh, reminded by that one, 
I will stop the program so that the user knows that I have entered a wrong value. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, maksudnya apa? Otherwise, meaning that when this product is less than zero, then you have the roots within that bracket. You have the roots and barulah you boleh compute this midpoint value, XM. Okay. XM is your X lower plus X upper divided by 2. If this condition is still uh, achieved, you cannot get XM value. Memang tak boleh. Kenapa tak boleh? Sebab saya dah stop program ni. Apa ni? Saya stop. But once the interval is correct, then I can able to perform this procedure to find the uh, interval. Eh, sebab you punya XL and X apa tu dah betul. Kalau tak betul, saya memang arahkan octave stop. Kita tak bagi can terus. Eh, kita bagi channel ul, betul kembali X and X apa baru boleh buat the next step eh. macam you ambil subjek lah ada subjek tu prerequisite selagi you tak lepas ambil prerequisite tu you tak boleh ambil subjek ke depan ha, macam tu lah faham tak? faham saya ok faham eh faham. ok faham. so is the next step if to check this this is that we call as stopping criterion ni stopping criterion yang saya ajar tadi Stopping criterion. Stopping criterion. Okay. Macam mana saya tahu this is stopping criterion? If you still remember, this is the formula of epsilon A. Isn't it? And this is your epsilon S. Nampak? So, if you check this, if you found that your epsilon A by this formula suddenly less than epsilon S, that is a good news for you. Why? You can stop the program and you can display what is the root. Ah, ini memang good news lah. However, ah, ada however dia. However, if epsilon A is more than epsilon s you have to go to this step downwards hanya bila less than epsilon s saja you boleh happy stop the program but if this condition is true you have to do the next process as i uh, put my arrows on the screen okay so what is the process you have to find your fxm sini this is your FXM. You have to evaluate your FM, XM inside your formula. And after that, you have to multiply your F with your F1. What is F1? Remember, your F1 is your FXL. So, maksudnya benda ni adalah FXL multiplied by your FXM. If you found that is more than zero, yang ni, ayat ni semuanya adalah yang ini eh it is more than zero, then you have to set that this condition. Otherwise, otherwise maksudnya apa? Ni else ni. Else ni maksudnya otherwise lah. Else maksudnya apa? Else when this is less than zero, you gonna set yang ini pula. Dalam you punya code MATLAB. Uh, code OCTAV. Nampak ada dua keadaan kat sini. Yang you kena control. Okay, so after that, go back to step number one. Pergi balik step number one ke atas. Calculate again your XM. Compute your EX apa Epsilon A. Compare with Epsilon S. If Epsilon A is still greater than Epsilon S, pergi balik ke bawah. Buat kerja ni lagi. Buat ni lagi. Go back to step number one. Naik atas balik. Suddenly, tiba-tiba dapat good news. Epsilon A ni tiba-tiba kecil daripada Epsilon S. Baru stop and display the rules. Nampak tak? Nampak saya. Itu yang saya buat tadi. Dekat sini tadi yang saya buat tadi. Ada iteration 1, iteration 2, iteration 3. And then saya kata macam nak stop. Kita kena ada stopping criterion. Ingat tak? 
Yang tu saya ingat. Itu yang saya letak dekat sini. Ini yang berlaku kat sini. Inilah yang berlaku di sini. Yang saya tunjuk tadi. Okay. So, if you found that your epsilon E is less than epsilon S, then you can stop the program and you can display you punya roots. Okay. Ini dia punya algorithm. Yeah. This is dia punya algorithm. After this, I will translate this algorithm to octave command. Yeah. To octave command. So, are you ready with the code uh, octave command or octave programming? Okay. Boleh saya pergi pada programming? Boleh, boleh. Okay. Okay, are you uh, penat ke apa nak rest dalam 5 minutes ke? Macam mana? Boleh, saya. Boleh terus, eh? Tak nak, tak nak rehat 5 minit ke apa? Tak nak, eh? Boleh, saya. Boleh. Ikut boleh. saya. Okay. Ah, saya ikut you juga. Kena tengok dekat you. Kalau you tak sihat ke tak larat pun kena rehat juga kan? Mana nak kahwin tak sihat? <tuk> tak apa kat rumah. Okay. Okay Alhamdulillah eh. Boleh baring-baring, golek-golek sambil kita tengok kuliah. No problem. Yang penting, <tuk> ah, tak kisahlah cara apa pun. Yang penting, you focus. Eh? Okay. So now I will explain how to perform octave programming using by session method. So before doing that, eh, before doing that, I want to uh, show you how to open uh, Octave. Maybe some of you have done it, but I just want to re revise. Uh, first of all, you have to install Octave lah. Eh, you tak install Octave, memang tak apa lah. Install Octave first, and then you can click your start menu, and please find GNU Octave folder. Eh, GNU Octave, okay? So, if you look carefully, my Octave version is quite old because the new version is 5.2. So, there is no much different at all. In actual, you can also use your 5.2 much more better than me. Lah. So, I'm using the old one. Never mind, still okay. So, just open this folder. And first of all, click the Octave CLI. Nampak ni? You ada dua jenis kat sini. First one is CLI. Second one is graphical user interface. So please click CLI and you have this black screen appeared and you must ensure that octave number one appeared on the screen and a blinking cursor will be there. So please minimize this window. Jangan close. Eh? Minimize saja to make it active and after that again open octave and eh? find octave folder Octave folder which is GNU. Now you run GN, uh, GUI, eh? graphical user interface. So I have tried to open only one, but if you open, let's say, GUI without CLI, this program cannot run. So you must be open concurrently, serentak. Eh? Ini dulu, kemudian klik ini. Uh, okay. So this is the dia punya uh, graphical user interface lah. You can drag this window to make it smaller or bigger. Okay. So you can type the command here lah. Let's say CLC eh, as you learned before to clear the screen. So you can see that I'm clearing the screen. I can clear the variables, clear all and so on. Okay. Setakat ni okay? Okay sir. Okay. Okay, so. okay, how to create script file? How to create script file? Very easy. You point the mouse to this file menu, click to the new, and click new script. Okay. File, new, new script. So once I click this new script, then you have a script appear in front of you. So this is like you will type you will call. Contohnya, by section method, they say, and then you have xl is equal to zero, eh? xu, sama je common ni macam max lab, memang tak ada beza pun. Eh? So I put semicolon di hujung ni to suppress the output. Eh? Okay, so if they say I want to run this code, let's say, katalah code saya ni dah selesai, sebenarnya banyak lagi, I just click this button run, click save file and run, okay, 
Ah kena bagi namalah. Saya save let's say in desktop. I name it as testing let's say. Okay. And click this change directory. Click saja change directory. And in order to see what is the output, you can click inside the command window punya tab. Eh kat bawah ni ada command window. Click command window memang tak ada apa-apa lah. Sebab kenapa tak ada apa-apa? Because I suppress the output. So if let's say I don't want to, I want to see the output, I must delete that command, delete that semicolon. I run it again and you may see that your output there. Nampak tu ada? Output XL is 0, XL is equal to. Nampak? Eh, itu contoh lah. Boleh? Okay, kalau boleh we go through now one by one each line of the codes. Okay, so uh, as a good programmer, as usual you must start your program by these two line. The first one is to clear the screen as usual. The second line is to clear the variable. So in practical test, if you do this, I will give you marks eh, at least one. So if you don't perform this, there is no mark for you for this two line. So just typing these two line, you already get marks. So this is a good behavior of MATLAB ataupun Octave programmer to start the program by putting these two lines. You dapat maka free kalau you buat dua benda ni. Okay? Boleh? Boleh, sir. Okay, so the next... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the next line after this is to register your function. To register your function. Ataupun you want to define the function. Register or define the function. Define your non-linear function. Okay, how to define it? Remember that your function, uh, the given function before, I have to proceed to the previous slides okay this is your function yang ni nampak ni this is your function 120x minus 5 over 6x cube minus 220 so all of this is your fx ataupun yang nak guna simbol mx pun boleh tak ada masalah saya gunakan fx Okay, so I have to define this function in my octave memory. So how to do that? Okay. Remember that your function is fx is equal to 120x minus 5 over 6x cubed minus 220. So in MATLAB, in order to define this, nampak ni, yang saya garis ni, fx equal, eh, ni semua ni, you have to use this command, f equal alias, open bracket, x close bracket. So this is representing fx. Nampak tak yang saya tulis dekat sini, di sini ni, ni. Nampak. Okay. Nampak. And, after, nampak. Eh? And the next function you have to type macam ni. Macam biasa lah. Eh? 120 times x. Oh jangan lupa tentang asterisk ni. Sebab dia darab. Minus 5 over 6 times x to the power of 3. Minus 220. And I want to suppress the output. I put semicolon. So that's how you define function in MATLAB ataupun in Octave. Okay? Okay. Okay. So the next part is to define your epsilon s. Remember epsilon s is given by the lecturers usually from 1 to 5%. In this case, I'm using 1%. Eh, this is usually given lah by the question or by the lecturer. Okay, and the top one here, I have also to define a certain value of epsilon A. Kenapa saya kena letak 100 kat sini? Why? Why 100? Kenapa kena define 100?
Why 100? Persen. Apa yang persen? 100% sir. 100% Betul lah 100% Tapi why kita tak kira dengan formula yang kita ada Kita ada formula kan Apa tadi formula ni? X old Minus S X new Bagi dengan X new oh, Kenapa tak nak kira ni? Kenapa tak nak kira dengan ni? Formula dah ada kan? Tapi saya sengaja pula letak value Why? Kenapa? Sebab tu initial value Sebelum dia rasa Initial value what? Apa dia? Macam dah betul tu? Apa dia? Terangkan sikit lebih? Initial value sebelum kita kira semua. Ah, uh, Baru dalam 50% lah menjawab. Menghampiri lah tapi bos paruh tu. Sebabnya, cuba you tengok betul-betul lah. -betul, eh? Daripada sini sampai lah sini. Ada tak nilai X old kat dalam situ? Ada tak? Tak ada. Tak ada. X new ada tak? Albi tu macam nak kira X Epsilon A Memang tak boleh kira kan? Betul Jadi saya kena set a dummy value for it A dummy value A dummy value A fake value Why? Because we want to ensure that this Stopping criterion tak stop Kalau kalau you tak define nanti dia akan stop So, apa you punya stopping criterion? Epsilon A kena lebih kecil daripada Epsilon S baru stop kan? Uh -uh. So, kalau lah Epsilon A ni 0.5, dia stop tak rasanya? Kalau katalah bukan 100, Epsilon A saya letak 0.1, Epsilon S ni memang 1, Is it this condition stop, stop. So kalau stop tak guna lah kita nak buat searching method. Kita nak dia teruskan dulu. Kemudian baru dia update epsilon A. So that's why I have to put a very large value from epsilon S. So you boleh letak sini nilai apa lah. Oh, 2 juta boleh. 3 bilion pun boleh. 5 bilion pun boleh. As long as must more greater than epsilon S. It's a dummy value. Okay. Okay, so so uh, saya, so I have to uh, explain you one line by line to ensure that you understand and appreciate each line of the coding so that you are not only memorizing the code but you understand one by one. That's why I explain very, very detail. Ha, itu sebabnya saya bersungguh-sungguh cerita ni sebab saya tak nak you hafal. You must understand. Line by line. Ha, dia ada cerita dia. Dia bukan kita type dia. Kita ada cerita dia tu. Setiap satu ni. Dia punya huraian dia tu. Okay. The next part after this is to define your lower limits. Lower gas value XL. And upper gas value. So I will choose the the correct value lah supaya kita main program tak 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 ada problem xl to be 0 and xu to be 2 eh? because within that range your code will be running well isn't it can in tadi acceptable range kan yes yeah. okay and after this okay what you should do you have to check the sign changes isn't it remember yes Okay, so in order to set, uh, check sign changes, I have to substitute XL yang you get from here to function F. What is your function F? Function F you define dekat sini. Nampak? So you substitute XL and submit here and dia compute balik, dia masuk sini balik. FXL. Here XU will be substitute here. Masuk dalam F. And then that function will be compute and get the value here. This value multiplied this value, that product will be stored in sign one variable. Nampak tak? So this step is to check, is to find the the value of fxl times with fxu to find this value. What is this value? And this value saya letak dalam variable assign one. Any questions? Not yet. Not yet. Eh? Okay. 
So I will go to the next, uh, proceed with the next slide. Okay, remember that your sign one, we sign one we is one. Sign one tadi saya dah beritahu, is your FXL multiplied by FXU, isn't it? Yes. Okay. If this yes. sign is less than zero, apa conclusion dia? If this sign, this sign, this one, less than zero, apa dia punya interpretation? Apa dia? There is root within that XL and XU. So that's why I will I will display on the screen, eh, display this statement on the computer screen. There is root within this bracket. Else, ah, okay, bila jumpa else ni maksudnya when your sign one is more than zero. So apa jadinya? Apa beritanya kalau sign one is more than zero? No, 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 no. Okay, kemudian saya akan buat satu statement yang kejam Exit from the program Yang ni saya tak letak dalam notes, you tolong letak dalam notes dia Exit Terus keluar Program ni terus exit Memang dengan kejam dia akan terus keluar yeah. We'll get out You tak sempat nak buat apa pun Terus keluar Kenapa ni? You have to tap word exit before ends. Okay, ini satu loop eh. Satu loop if eh. One if loops. Nampak tu? So, maksudnya this program will only allows you to be only successful only. Dia tak boleh benarkan you a failure. Okay. A successful, uh, uh, when is the condition? When sign one is less than zero, then you are able to proceed with the next statement. If let's say sign zero, a uh, sign one is more than zero, memang tak ada peluang terus ke bawah, terus keluar. Nampak? Nampak sah? Ah, nampak ya? Eh? Ah, okay, okay. Uh, after that, there is a statement here, eh? statement di sini yang ni. This statement is only to give title of my table, eh? to put title on the table. Aku maksud put title on table, ok? So, saya plan nak buat, komputer ni akan print macam ni, dia akan print the iteration kemudian sebelah dia akan print x lower value next, we will print out x upper value and then we'll cetak midpoint value and epsilon a So, saya nak dia cetak ini nampak dengan statement ni, nampak ni Perkataan ni, perkataan ITER, perkataan XL, the word XU, the word XM and word E, Epsilon E on the computer screen. Okay, and then this statement yang di bawah ni, this statement will put underline. So, nampak macam table lah, nampak tak tu? Nampak tak tu? Nampak sir. Okay, what this statement stand for what ni? DISP, kemudian dia ada apostrophe blank tak ada apa-apa situ and then suddenly apostrophe what what apa yang nak buat sebenarnya kat situ nak buat apa sebenarnya dia sama statement ni lah yang ni sama it's the same statement what this statement doing what bagi orang kosong ha, maksudnya kita akan bagi macam ada empty line kat sini lah Maksudnya TV dia akan nampak cantik lah. So you ada satu statement on the top and then the blank line kemudian baru tulis kat bawah tu. Okay. So this is my planning lah. So that uh, we can see the iteration number XL, XU, XM and Epsilon A. Boleh? Boleh sir. Okay sorry eh. Hopefully you can bear with me sebab saya explain line by line. Ada 83 line ni. Yeah, kita akan ada lagi uh, tiga slide untuk yang ni lagi. Line by line. Sebab saya tak nak you hafal. You understand. You appreciate. Line by line. Sebab kita bukan buat code ni untuk dihafal. Kita buat code untuk dipaham. 
Okay. So what we'll do after that? We start our iteration from zero. Mana pula mouse saya ni? Sekejap ya. Eh. Okay, ada pun. Ah, ni. We'll start our iteration from zero. Okay. And then once the sign one is less than zero, then we can allow midpoint to be computed. Eh? Midpoint ni, if you still remember, the formula is half of XL plus XU. Eh? So half, I'll call some point lima lah kan? It's the same thing of one divided by two. So this statement can be only executed if sign one less than zero tau. Kalau sign one more than zero, jangan harap you boleh kira ni. Cannot. Eh? If sign one only less than zero, then you can execute this statement. Baru ada harapan statement ni nak capai. Okay? Okay. Okay, we proceed okay. to the next slide. Okay. Ah, sekarang ni kita akan berada pada satu gelung while loop yang besar. Gelung ni dia punya loop eh. While epsilon A, remember that your epsilon A I have defined in the beginning to be 100, a dummy value. Yes. 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 Epsilon A, saya letak tadi 1. Yes, Does sir. this statement is true or false? True. True meaning that apa akan jadi? We have to execute the whole statement here. Okay, sir. Sengaja saya lepaskan true. Faham tak? Okay. If this statement is true, memang true pun, we start to perform the next iteration. So, the next iteration will be 0 plus 1. Mana datang 0 ni? Which is 1. Mana datang 0 ni? Yang awal tadi. Yang awal tadi, betul. So, betul. Meaning that our iteration will be 1 and our epsilon here will be 100. Ingat? Our iteration is 1, betul. Tetapi epsilon kita bermula dengan 100, betul? Betul. Okay. Then you'll be able to compute sign 2. Ha, tadi sign 1. Sekarang sign 2. Mana saya dapat ni? Mana saya dapat arahan ni? Ni mana saya dapat ni? Okay, rujuk balik pada uh, algorithm. Eh? Refer to our algorithm. Remember this. Mana pula ni? Ini. Ini ni. Nampak tak ni? Saya rujuk ini. This is sign to. This is sign to FXL multiplied by FXM. This is sign to. Nampak tak? Nampak saya. Okay, nampak. That's why I'm using that algorithm. Sebab itu saya kata algorithm ini memang you kena faham. Then you can able to code. Uh, you can able to code. Nah, ini yang saya buat ni. Nampak ni? Saya ikut dia. So, if this sign to, okay, less than zero. Okay, macam mana saya tahu less than zero? Ada tak statement tadi dalam algoritma tadi? If this value is more than zero, so maksudnya kalau less than zero, yang ni lah. This is less than zero. So I have to set my x to be x2 and my f to be f2. So that's why I will set when sign 2 less than zero, I have to set this. Ni, I have to set this. Faham tak? Faham tak? Faham um, tak? So kita ganti ni lah. Okay. And then di masa inilah, on this time we are able to compute our epsilon A which is X old ke? X old eh? Saya pun tak ingat lah. X old ke X new dulu. Saya tak pasti. Divide minus by X new divided by X new times 100. Di masa inilah we have the opportunity to compute epsilon A. Sebab yang awal tadi 100, isn't it? Now we want to update epsilon A. We want to update. So how to update? I have to find my x hole by using this command. 
You nampak tak macam mana how how nice I arrange the coat so that I can get my ex old and I can also capture my ex new yang atas dengan bawah ni will be this one. Uh, sekejap eh, saya nak jawab call lah. Eh. Sekejap lah. Eh. Okay. Can you see that how I can get my X old and X new? Yes. 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 Uh, okay. So when yeah. when I can get my X old and X new, I can calculate my updated epsilon a, yang mana mula mula tadi bermula dengan seratus. Now I can get the next epsilon a for the next iteration. So that's that's yeah, ada lah epsilon a. So maybe on this stage epsilon a saya bukan seratus lagi. Maybe jadi 66%. Maybe. Maybe. Because we have now the new value of XM and the old value of XM. Nampak? Okay? Okay. 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 Next, I will proceed to the next slide. Jangan hiraukan yang ini dulu. Yang ini jangan hirau dulu. Kita tengok yang ini dulu. Okay. The first, kenapa saya tak suruh tak hirau ini? Because this is the case when sine 2 less than 0. Betul? This is the case when sine 2 more than 0. Can you see that? There are two cases. When this sine 2 more than 0, you have to set this. You have to set this. Nampak? And also, I can able to compute my epsilon a using the same formula, x old minus x n divided by x n, where I can capture my old value here from this command and my new here from this command. I can get updated value of epsilon a when the case sign to more than zero. Yang tadi tu sign to less than zero. Saya pun mikir epsilon. Sign 2 more than 0 pun, I can copy my updated epsilon A. Nampak tak? Nampak, sir. Nampak, eh? Okay. Now, I will go back to the previous slide. Okay, previous slide, eh? Welcome, Malik. Consider this case again. Consider case sign 2 less than 0. Okay, boleh akan buat benda ni. Okay. Ni masih lagi sign 2 less than 0 eh. If the iteration value is equal to 1, maksudnya yang tadi ni, yang awal ni, kan kita punya iteration ni sama dengan 1 eh. Betul tak? Nampak tak? Okay. Betul. Okay. When iteration is equal to 1, apakah nilai epsilon A kita sebenarnya? Bila iteration 1 is, berapa nilai dia? What is the value of epsilon A when iteration is equal to 1? Adakah 100. 100? Kenapa 100? Sebab kita tak ada lagi nilai X old and X new on that time when iteration is equal to 1. That's why I have to set this condition. Nampak ni? Nampak? Okay, however, however, when iteration is not equal to 1, maksudnya else, maksudnya your iteration will be 2, 3, 4, until what number, as long as not equal to 1, then I can compute epsilon A using the formula. Nampak? Nampak, sir. Nampak, kan? Uh, that's... You you must analyze the statement one by one. You can see how nice I, I arrange that statement. Because you must put that statement logically. Kalau tidak memang tak boleh kira. Okay. So that is the case for sine 2 less than 0. Okay. Now consider case sine 2 more than 0. You akan buat benda ni. Tadi kita dah bincang. Next we have to put the same statement yang kita buat tadi. Same statement. Eh? When iteration is equal to 1. Epsilon A is equal 100. When it's not equal to 1, you can compute Epsilon A using the formula. Nampak? 
So we covered both cases, sine 1, sorry, sine 2 more than 0, sine 2 less than 0. Kita cover dua-dua sekali. Nampak? Nampak. Okay. So once the loop F, uh, the if loop is N, then I will update the new value to XM. This is your new value of roots and I will hold that value to XM and we will print. Ah, ini kita print ni. Ingat tak tadi saya ada buat table kan? Iteration. Apa tadi? Yeah, XM. Epsilon A. So this is where you print out the value of iteration yang kita tulis ni bagai 1, XL maybe 0, XU will be 2, XM will be 1.0 lah. And Epsilon A is 100. Can you see that? Yes. Sir. Okay. So in order to control the formatting style, for the iteration, so iteration, the number will be integer, isn't it? Then because one, two, yes. three. Yes. So I have to control that format using this format, percentage I. I stands for integer. Ba. Okay. <laughs> XL, XU, XM, Epsilon A, all are numbers which is have decimals, isn't it? Then it's not yes. Yes. We call it as floating, isn't it? Floating numbers. Yes. So that's why I'm using symbol F here. Can you see that? Symbol F for all of the values, which is uh, this is your XL, this is for your XU. This is for your XM, and the last one is for your Epsilon A. Okay, so this we call it as formatting style, eh? format style. We control the format. Saya rasa dan si plus plus ni ada belajar kau pasal ni, format style ni. Tak ada. Tak ada, ha, tak tahulah kenapa lecture tak ajar kesian you. Okay, so nampak tak ni simbol ni? Slash N. What is the meaning of slash N? What we will do? Slash N ni. This. It will, it will do what? Skip. Uh, you will enter the line. Meaning that you will, you will, you will, you macam letak, you macam tekan button enter and you can prepare for the next line. Okay, supaya we keep, kita boleh isi what is the value here. What is value here? What is value here? And so on. Nama? Nampak saya. Okay. So oh. before we end, kita tak boleh end ni. Nampak je word end. Kita tak boleh end. We have to go back to the previous slide. Ke mana? Ke while loop ni. Daripada bawah tadi naik balik ke sini. Semak lagi. Does our epsilon A is still greater than epsilon S? Katalah tadi kita dapat 66%. Does this is still true? Yes. So kalau true apa kena buat? Kena teruskan lagi. So meaning that your iteration now is is starting from 1 plus 1 which is 2. Two. Dah jadi kira pula. Kira pula ni. Kira ini. Kira ini. Kira ini. Kira ini, until lah dia akan cetak ni. So, you akan dapat, the next iteration will be this, will be 2. Yang ini maybe 1.5, maybe, saya tak pasti. This is maybe 2, 1.75, and this one will be maybe 66, maybe, I do not know. Okay, and sebelum dia pergi end, dia pergi naik balik ke atas. Sampai while loop ni. Katalah saya pendekkan cerita, I short the story. Let's say this to be 0 0.1, let's say. So, does this statement is true or false? False. False is, is good news for you why you can end the loop. Barulah boleh end. Barulah habis ceritanya. 
Maksudnya maybe iteration kedua saya dia habis. Contohnya lah. Contoh. Saya tak tahu berapa iteration. I do not know. Okay. Boleh? Boleh. Okay. Boleh okay. 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 After that, we have finished our bisection method and we can summarize our our findings lah. So, Boleh, sir. I, will, I will display I will display the results. The iteration number is okay. Iteration, berapa iteration yang saya ada? The format is integer and the root is xm with the floating format. Okay. And I'll put enter, eh, space, eh, ataupun space ataupun enter, so that you can see a conclusion of that, uh, of your iteration ataupun bisection methods. Okay. 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 Kita tengok, uh, kita tengok kod uh, MATLAB. Eh. We will see one demonstration of the MATLAB. So I will open the code, already have written it. So I'll just open it, open. Okay, this code I have written it. It has about 80 something lines, eh? but agak panjang juga. 88. Eh? And let's say, let's say I want to put my X lower here from zero. And suddenly, I just put my wrong values for x u to be 1. Eh, if you still remember, uh, the correct value must be 0 until 2, isn't it? But now, I, I just purposely put x u to be 1. And then my epsilon s, I will put it as 1%. Okay, cuba tengok apa berlaku kalau saya buat ni. Eh. You tengok apa berlaku. I will run it. I will change the directory and you get a very uh, dramatic results. It get arcs from the screen. There is no octave there. Nampak tak apa yang saya kata tadi? Dia akan keluar terus dari program. Nampak. Hmm. Uh, Dia tak pernah akan you proceed. Sebab you have to, you have already put wrong range. So I have to open back my uh, genu octave. Uh, mana kat tadi, GNU Octis, GUI. Okay, and then I open my code again. Uh, where is it? Okay, and I will put the, the, the good value for it, which is 2. Okay, and I will run it. And to see the answer or the result, you must point your mouse to comma window and you can see that the tables listing the iterations. Okay. So uh, there is a display called as there is root within the bracket. Okay. And as I said, I will put the, the title of the table iteration. So yang ni beranjak sikit, eh. you boleh tarik kan, eh. you boleh pandai-pandai tarik. And then I'll put underline for it, nak bagi dia cantik. So the first iteration, the lower value is 1, the upper value is 2, the mid value is 1.5. Can you see that the beginning at epsilon A is 100? Okay. Yeah. Okay, now we will be reduce, okay. reduce, reduce, reduce until epsilon A less than 1%. You nampak tak eh? 0.81 which is less than 1%, they can stop at iteration 6. So, the report will be the iteration number is 6, yang ni, with the root of 1.890625. Nampak? Nampak, nampak saya. Cuba saya ubah, saya ubah epsilon s ni kata lebih kecil, katakan 0 0.0001 lah, memang very very small. So, see what will happen to the program if I run with such small epsilon s, I will run it and you may see that the iteration number will be much more greater than 6. Kenapa rasanya dia besar daripada 6? Sekarang dah jadi 20. Why? Nampak? From 100, 
16, 7, 3, 1, until this value will be less than epsilon s, then it will be stopped at iteration 20 with the value of 1.879436. About. So if I want to evaluate my fxm, my xm value, I can compute xm. So if I want to compute my xm, the value will be almost zero. 0.0002. Okay. 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 So, okay. Uh, we well, proceed fine. with the next last method, which is neutralization. This is a very fast method compared by section method. Memang very fast. Why is it so fast? Because you just only use this formula. This is the formula that you use to compute your roots. And the first formula here, this is defining your future roots, your future roots, or some textbooks call it as next roots. Okay. And this is your current roots, eh? your current roots. So the formula uh, will be stated like this. The future roots is equal to the current roots minus the function containing your current roots divided by the first derivative f prime of your current roots. Still remember how to find your first derivative? Remember to find your first derivative? Uh, derivative in that your dy dx lah. Okay. your dy dx so remember that your function fx is 120x minus 5 over 6 x cubed minus 2 to o so you have to perform this uh, differentiation manually eh? not, not by MATLAB so by using your calculus this will be 120 minus 15 over 6 x squared. So you have two functions. Huh? One, the first function is for your fx. The second function for your first derivative. Yang ni you kena buat manually. MATLAB takkan buat untuk you. Eh? So after you found this function, you, have, you can input and insert it here and you'll be able to compute your future roots. Okay, so I will uh, tell you the mechanism, how to find it. So let's say this is your fx that you want to find the roots. Eh? So I will use this line. This is your fx. So in your case, your fx is maybe 120. X minus 5 over 6. X cubed minus 2 to O. So from the graph, you may see that the graph will be intersecting x value somewhere here. So this is your exact roots. Your exact roots. Okay, so how the method works? The method works by starting, you have to assign one initial gas value. Okay, and let's say the first initial value is x1. Okay. This is your first initial gas value first initial gas value so you have to put this x value and put somewhere on the function here and you draw a tangent line through that points and that tangent line will intersecting your x axis so when the this tangent line intersecting your x axis this will be your the next root. So the first root is x1, the next root will be x2. Okay, so using this point also, put that x2 on the function, draw a tangent line through that x2 from, uh, values, and all, again you will intersecting x axis at this point. And this is your x3 that will be the future roots. Okay, so you may see that this x1, x2, x3 
will be moving towards to the exact values. And how how many times this process has been to be conducted? So berapa lama berapa banyak kita nak buat benda ni? Takkan sampai kiamat kot. Bila uh, relatif EA EA less than epsilon s where your epsilon a definition ni apa? x future ataupun xi plus 1 minus x current i divided by xi plus 1 darab 100 okay. and this epsilon s usually between 1 to 5% right? Uh, this is topping criteria. Eh, kalau tidak memang sampai bila pun tak berhenti lah proses ni. Eh, you must set a stopping condition. Boleh? Boleh sir. Okay. Kita ada dalam Boleh, slide lagi nak habis. Okay. How the algorithm for, uh, what is the algorithm for interruption? As usual, as I said before, you have to, uh, you have to, set the initial gas value for x not okay. you have to set one initial gas value if you compare with bisection method you have to prepare two initial gas xl and x upper however in neutralization only one satu saja plus one epsilon s value which is from 1% to 5% as set by the lecture or set by the problem okay The next step is to perform dy dx of the function. This you have to perform manually. Okay? So you know the function f, then you have to find your f prime x manually. And after that, you can use this formula to get your future roots based on the current roots. And in order to stop this process, You have to ensure that your epsilon e less than epsilon s, where your epsilon e is given by this formula. So once this condition is met, you can stop the iteration and you can display the root values. Okay, so algorithm is very very short. Eh? It's not so complicated as by session methods, and the program only requires only two screen and two slides. To finish. Boleh? Boleh. Again, I will uh, show you one by one the line. It's not so long, only two slides. As usual, we have to write this in order to clear the screen and also clear the, all the variables. This is where you put your initial gas value. As I say in the algorithm. You have to prepare one initial gas value. So in this case, should be is not 10, but should be two lah. And I will put two, and I will set my epsilon s, which is given by the problem or the lecturer, which is between one to five. Here I will use one percent, and I set a dummy value of epsilon a to be 100. Okay. And after I know my x naught, I will assign this x naught to a variable x. Ada sebabnya, nanti saya akan tunjukkan nanti di slide selepas ini. Selepas ni. And remember that you have to define your function f. Okay. And this is your function of your f prime. Okay. So I will, I will use symbol df. Eh? Df meaning that your differentiated function lah. So df is equal to Elias x 120 minus 15 over 6x x, x squared. So you have to define two functions here. Okay? The first one is a f, second one is your f prime. Ah, ini kena prepare, kena prepare manually. And as usual, you start the iteration by zero. And this is where you prepare the title of your table the title of the table okay so on the next slide so you may see that the while loop is very very short nampak ni this is your while loop only very short lines where you have to check your ea epsilon a is greater than as so this is 100 
this is one so this condition is true then you have to perform this statement you compute your iterations okay so your old value here can has will be captured here and put to the variable x old and you compute your future value by using that line which is xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus fxn divided by f prime xn so i put the codes in this form okay where this is the old value However, the front x value is the new value. Okay. So that's why you may see that on the top here, the, the current value x will be old. However, this new current x value will be the new. Kenapa saya nak buat benda ni? Because I want to compute my epsilon a. Eh? Remember the formula of epsilon a? Eh? And again, for iteration, when the iteration is equal to 1, macam by the method, this will be set as 100. But when the iteration is not equal to 1, then you will be able to compute your epsilon A. Kemudian, uh, dia, dia kena cetak, dia akan cetak iteration you berapa, what, what is your current X value, and what is your epsilon A. Sebelum dia pergi N, dia patah balik naik atas, check balik, Epsilon A ni. Selagi statement this is true, then go further ke bawah and again and again until your Epsilon A less than Epsilon S, then it will be N, the loop. Baru habis. Eh? And after that, you can print out your conclusions. Boleh? Boleh, sir. Okay, kita tengok code eh. We see the codes. We open the octave, and I will open back my code, which is Mr. Rapson. Okay, and I put here to be two, and my epsilon s here I will put to be one. You may see that the code is very short; it's about thirty-six lines compared to by session eighty-eight line. Eh? Very very short. So I will run it, and you may see that. Just only two iteration. You nampak tak? Dia meloncat daripada 100 terus dari 0.03. Very, very fast. Compared to bisection method, you require six iterations. And you get the answer to be 1.879435 by two iteration with error of this, which is less than 1%. Nampak tak? Very fast. Nampak, sir. Nampak, eh? Nampak, two so yeah. kalau saya kisikan dia punya epsilon A ni to be much more smaller, katalah 0 0.0001 kecil eh, kalau saya run how many iterations? 3 saja. tak macam by session method ni sampai 20 so still, uh, this method is very fast nampak? Yeah, nampak saya ok, so for your uh, assignment you have to submit your assignment on uh, Sunday, Sunday, eh? Sunday 9 a.m. through Google Classroom. Eh? You have Google Classroom with me. You have to submit your assignment on this su Sunday 9 a.m. Uh, this is the assignment. This assignment nanti saya letak dalam WhatsApp, dalam island. Okay. So you have to solve this assignment using bisection method and Newton Rapson. And the given epsilon s is 1%. So do as individual. You can discuss with your friends, tetapi janganlah copy. Yeah. Janganlah copy. Maksudnya you tahu kawan dah buat master copy, you hantar je kawan ni. Tak, tak, tak jujur lah, tak amanah lah. Nanti you punya ilmu pun tak berkat. Yeah. Hantar yang you punya sendiri. Nak bincang boleh, tetapi hantar tu biarlah bersendirian. Boleh? Boleh, saya. Okay. okay. So, this assignment will be given nanti in WhatsApp group soon after I end the lecture. And, uh, sekejap eh, sekejap.
Sekejap ya, sekejap. Jangan jangan kian tahu dulu, sekejap sekejap. Tak apa-apa tak apa. Ah, takut kang ada pula juga sikit not uh, ni pengumuman sekejap. Okay, uh, apa tadi cakap? Okay, your attendance will be given after this. Uh, group A1, uh, one Google Form. Group A2, one Google Form. And also uh, an assignment uh, document. Okay. So, is there any question before we ended our classroom session? Okay, for those who cannot uh, receive this, uh, who cannot uh, go online uh, smoothly, I will put this uh, video in YouTube uh, channel and I will give you the link so that you can view it later on. Boleh? Boleh. Okay. You have any question before we end our, our classroom? You have any questions? Not yet. Not yet, eh? Okay, later on kalau ada apa-apa, tolong WhatsApp saya lah kalau ada apa-apa. Okay? Okay, thank you, okay. sir. So, uh, with that, uh, we call, we end our classroom session dengan surah wal asri dan tasri kifar. Okay, terima kasih banyak. So, uh, semoga semuanya sihat, eh? stay safe. Dan uh, selamat belajar. Okey, salam okay. alaikum. Okey, thank you sir. Thank you sir. Sama-sama. Okey, assalamualaikum. Salam. Salam.